Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Years ago, uh, Reader's Digest had a kind of quirky item that it printed about daily lives of ordinary people. Uh, many of these are amusing. I wrote a few years ago to tell about a billboard that she passed while driving through Texas. The billboard read, Stand up and be counted for the 2000 census. The sign was sponsored by the Rosewood Cemetery. <laughs> Coming from Chicago, I think that could have been sponsored by a Chicago company. But anyway, another woman wrote in a funny excuse that she heard from a co-worker. The man explained his absence from work by saying, I'm having an autopsy tomorrow, but with any luck, uh, I'll be in the day after. <laughs> The good news today in this story of Lazarus, and, and the version you saw was uh, Franco Zeffirelli's Jesus of Nazareth version, very creative. Uh, we have to have a cinematographer there, but the fact that Lazarus comes up and the shadow of Jesus is there too, you know, his arms stretched out is a hint of the cross and the Lord's own resurrection. It's, it's great cinematography uh, if you're into that kind of stuff. But the story of Lazarus, the good news of Lazarus, is that if you're a friend of Jesus, you won't be dead forever. And in fact, in some cases, only for a little while. And so that's good news, is it not for us? And we'll be talking a lot more about that on Easter. Um, in the Bible account, uh, Word is sent to Jesus that your friend Lazarus is ill. And Jesus waits a while. We think it took as long as a day for this messenger to get there. And then Jesus waits two days. And so by the time he gets there, it's now been four days. The significance of that is there was this Jewish myth, legend, thought. Not a biblical thought, just a thought. That the soul lingered around for about three days, and then would go to its final resting place. And so for the fact that it was four days later is significant. This guy is deader than a doornail. He is definitely gone, all right? So nobody can just surmise that his resurrection was this whole idea of a soul lingering for a few more days, you know? None of that. In fact, one of the shortest verses of the Bible, not the shortest, but uh, it is a verse that, I, King James, any of you like King James, you know? Uh, sometimes I like King James, you know? I mean, isn't that the version St. Paul used? You know? All right, anyway, but I love in the King James how it says, when Jesus says, roll away the stone, and one of the women says, Lord, it's been four days, he stinketh. I love that verse. He stinketh, you know. He was very much God. But you know, Jesus says, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? This story is told today. Uh, it's a hint towards Easter, but it's also told in the full biblical account, which is like 50-some verses, that after this miracle, the Jewish leaders get together, and they don't know what to do with this Jesus, because each miracle he does is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I mean, it's gone from a, a simple, simple change in water into wine, right? To healing a nobleman's son, uh, to uh, curing a lame man, if it says the, right? Feeding 5,000 people with loaves and bread, walking on water, healing a man born blind, but now, raising a man who's been dead for four days. The evidence for Jesus is getting so strong that the religious leaders, they're beside themselves. How can we deal with this guy? You know, people are thinking that he's God in human flesh. We gotta get rid of this guy. He's a threat to our power. Caiaphas stands up, the Jewish leader, the high priest, and says, you're fools. Don't you know it's better for one man to die than the nation perish? And so they began to plot the death of Jesus. 
This story is told to give you why they will want to kill Jesus. He is now very popular, very powerful, and the evidence is there, and they're so blind to it that he is God, and that all the predictions of what could happen when the Messiah came were being fulfilled in Jesus. And so they want to get rid of him. From this account, and it's a long account, so I'm not going to uh, go through the whole thing. We'd be here for hours, right? Uh, I don't think the ladies' aid is prepared to serve lunch, are you? Uh, <laughs> all right, as good as you have been. Uh, that would be asking too much today. But um, there's this wonderful part where Jesus is talking to one of the sisters and said, you know, um, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. You know that verse? We say it sometimes at uh, funerals, do we not? And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. It seems almost contradictory. But in the Bible, say, we talked about this today, that death in the Bible is the idea of separation. All right? When Adam and Eve sinned against God in the garden, they did die. Yes, God said you will die that very day, but they lived physically another hundreds of years, right? They spiritually died. They got separated from God. And ever since then, we come into this world dead spiritually. We're separated from God until God works on our hearts, right? Through baptism or through the gospel message, right? And if you don't come to faith in Jesus Christ, you'll be eternally separated in an eternal death that we call hell. Now do you understand that passage? Whoever believes in me, though he physically dies, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die the death of hell. Isn't that good news? And you can bank on it because Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Greater assurance will come in a few weeks when Jesus himself rises from the dead. And when Jesus rises from the dead, God is vindic vindicating everything he ever said. You see, God is not in the habit of credentialing a liar. And because God will raise Jesus from the dead, you can bank on every promise of Jesus to be true. Is there a promise you need to bank on today? Jesus said, I'll never leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will give you a peace. Peace do I give you. Not like the world gives. My peace you give, I give you. In the world you will have troubles. But be of good cheer. I have overcome this world. All who come to me I will never cast away. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden. And I'll give you rest for your souls. Those and every other word that Jesus spoke is true because God raised him from the dead. And most certainly true is the fact that your sins are forgiven because Jesus died for you. You'll be assured of that on Easter because God is not in the habit of raising and vindicating anyone who lies. In fact, he hates it supremely. All right. One more thought I have here today. A couple of us were talking about this before service. That guy, that poor guy, he comes back to life. But guess what? He's going to have to die again. Have you ever thought of that? He's going to get sick again. You know? But I bet you the next time he got sick, he wasn't so worried, was he? And maybe and Martha weren't so fearful either, right? He would face his death much more confidently knowing that Jesus had power over death. So I want to put before you today, Lazarus. And that you might become like a Lazarus. Knowing that Jesus has power over death, you can commit yourself to his care. Right? Isn't that good news for us, some of us who are aging? Isn't that good news for some of us who are doctoring, you know? 
Is that good news for some of us who are grieving? In the early church, some Christians are buried in things called catacombs, these little burial spots. And there's some, re some interesting religious artwork over the catacombs. Religious artwork that would give you hope for your loved one who has passed away. You would think it would be a sketch or a drawing of Jesus and his resurrection. But no, it's the story of Lazarus that's sketched out in stone. And the thought here is, just as Jesus called Lazarus by name, He's going to call your loved one by name from their grave. And he's going to call you by name from your grave. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that, that thought? You know? And with God solving us our ultimate problem, my friend, of where we spend eternity and how we can stand before him forgiven and righteous in his sight, if he's forgiven us that problem, if he's handled that problem, Surely this is a good God that's worth knowing in this life. That's a good God worth telling others about, whether it's Easter or not. This is the God who's given us Jesus. And in him, like a solid rock, we have assurance for the rest of our life and for eternity. We can bank on Jesus and build our lives in him. May you have such strong confidence that you will want to sing about that and tell others about that. In Jesus' name, amen.